Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're still, uh, well, we're in Edern right now after we've uh, saved Black Ryla from these uh, Scoyatel commandos in the previous episode. And we're gonna take a look at a few things. We're gonna start out by checking out our messages first. So we have a report, the situation in Edern with Lyria and Rivia taken full strength of army group East redirected against Edern. Fierce Edernian resistance, but border posts fell. King Demavent pulling back from small garrisons and concentrating forces in heavily defended fortresses. Rilsburg, Aldersburg, Vangerburg, significant increase in Squiatel activity, attacks on merchants, refugees, but not Nilfgaardian convoys. All evidence indicates Squiatel working with the enemy. So, as happened in Lyria, the Nilfgaardians are getting more and more support from the lands they're actually trying to overtake. So the Squiatel are also helping out the elves and dwarves are also helping out the Nilfgaardians. And then we have Appeal to Folk of Lyria and Rivia. It's a pamphlet. Queen Meath cares not a whit for your interests. Instead of seeking peace with the Nilfgaardian Empire, she has chosen pointless resistance, sentencing you all to annihilation. To save their subjects from this fate, the Council of Peers decided to remove the Mad Queen from the throne. In her cruel lunacy, she defied our ruling, spat upon our laws, she has fled the country in cowardice and seeks now to sow havoc. The rightful monarch is Meave's eldest son, Willem. He shall be advised in this difficult time by Count Caldwell. The meadows of Lyria and Rivia shall blossom under the light of the golden sun. Long live the Emperor. And marked with a boar. And we know that uh, Lord Caldwell's signal, uh, well, signet, uh, signature uh, emblem was the boar. And then the final one, letter from Captain Tobias, number one. Your Majesty, though we spoke to each other, not not long ago, I have no doubt you do not recall my name. I am the guard who stopped you as you fled Lyria, the guard who doubted you. Your Highness, once more I apologize for my cowardice and thank you for giving me a chance to repair my error. I cannot save Lyria from the Nilfgaardians' talons, but I can write you about their secrets. I have won myself a post at the palace, I shall keep my ears open and if I learn anything I shall inform you at once. Gods grant you luck, my lady. We await your return, Captain Tobias. Okay, so we do ha still have uh, options here. We still have allies in the city as well. And it seems like those are actually marked uh, per chapter. So we have four, five reports from the previous chapter and three from this one. And then we got a few new cards. So let's check out what Black Royla can actually do for us. So our camp looks a bit different than it did before, but I think I can actually do something, some work in the workshop as well. So let's check that out first. So we can improve the royal treasury to increase the number of trinkets that Meave can equip by to four. Then we have the mass tents, uh, which, okay, units will take up 10% less of the recruit cap, which is nice. I think we're good for now. I'm going to check out the command tent. Decreases the gold cost of creating units by 10%. Increases the recruit cap to 150, 200, and then probably 250. That is interesting. That is really nice, those upgrades. Because that will allow us to even bypass what the mess stand has to offer for us. And just allow us to make add more units to the deck. Then the training ground. Uh, Forager's quarter... Gain between 75 and 150 instead of 25 and 75. And two recruits instead of one. Then the training grounds enables you to recruit new combat units. But they're actually upgrades. So the loyal ability of the Lady Incitement is boosted to 7 instead of 5. Then the Stray's Bomber seems to be just higher power to start with. And then the Grey Rider after a different ally is played from hand or moved to the other row. Move next to it and boost it by 1. So just an active booster. Then the Stray's Den, which also upgrades the Bomber, the Cavalry and the Slingers. So just boosting... Yeah, I think that just boosts the base power of them, or just allows us to actually make those. And then the Armory, new Reynard combat units and promotes existing ones. So the Rivian Pikemen are boosted up to 7, which is nice. And then the Rivian Sapper damage a unit by 2 if it was destroyed, repeat this ability. Ooh, that's actually nice. Alirian Hajduk. Give one charge to the card on the right. 
also very interesting. Could go here, because these things are very, very interesting, but I have a limited amount of resources to spend on those. And then the workshop, uh, we know about the increased movement speed, but then the workshop also... So the field medic I could already do, I think. And then the pitfall trap, damage all units on this road by two. Whenever a unit appears on this road, damage it by two. So that's the original effect from Gwent, because that changed in Gwent itself. And the Lyrian Pathfinder, clear all real effects from your side after three turns. And turn start, draw the top card from your deck. That is also very powerful. And then the Alchemist Laboratory enables you to recruit new Gascon support units and promotes existing ones. Destroy two cards to the right if they were units. Boost self by their combined power. That's a very big upgrade to the uh, Forager there. Uh, and then we also have a Stray's Infiltrator. We know what that does. And then an Alchemist equal to the units on its left. I think we have one of those already as well. And then the Engineer's Drafting Desk. Delirium Blacksmith. Play a trinket from your graveyard and give it doomed. And then the War Wagon spawns three Light Infantries instead of two. And the Aretusa Adept. Choose the Bronze Adder on the battlefield or in hand and add two copies of it to your deck. Ooh, that is also very powerful. So I think my resources are better spent over here first. So I'm gonna do the Workshop 3. So that allows us to get one of those Lyrian Pathfinder, because that's really, really powerful. And then I think we should go with the Forager's Quarters as soon as possible. Just to get those that gold coming in quickly. Uh, and then the final thing I want to do... What? Let's do this and see how many resources we have left. Because uh, this is really powerful as well, and I think I can use that immediately. So let's do that as well. Only takes 100 wood and 1,000 coins. And that leaves us with a bit more resources to do anything else. Uh, next up is the command tent itself. Look at that, the workshop actually became bigger than the command tent. So the first thing I want to check out is what Rayla actually does. So, order play a card from your deck if in hand, deck, or on the battlefield. Strengthen self by two whenever a Squiatel unit is destroyed. That is, of course, really powerful against Squiatel. So, let's add that to the deck. And then I'm gonna have to make some sacrifices, because I only have 125 unit capacity. So, big changes to the deck. I swapped Meave out to the Rivian Broadsword. So damage an enemy unit and all other enemies with the same power by four then trigger all allies loyal abilities. The cooldown is a lot higher but I feel like it's a lot stronger and we've lost a few key units like the Arblasts uh, which means that we can't take advantage so much on the loyal abilities anymore. That also means that I swapped out the uh, trophy for from the banner because i can actually make our bless but i'm not going to do that just yet uh because i want to change it up a bit and we swapped out the rivian banner the lyrian banner for the manticore trophy so we damage every enemy that appears on the battlefield by one or two every time so that's a good way to do damage because i feel like that's going to become more and more important to offset that a bit I also added the Marana Runestone to heal all allies and boost them by two next to the Lyrian Merlot and the Lyrian Horn. So that, those are our trinkets right now. Then gold cards wise, uh, not much has changed. So we got Raynard, Black Rayla, Gascoin and Egg. So every gold card we can actually equip. And then I swapped a few things around a bit and we ended up with a War Wagon, two Regiment Drummers, uh, an alchemist, which can actually set the unit power equal to the unit on its left. And more onto the foragers. So the foragers still do the same thing, but they're pretty much the strongest thing I have. Then a lot of stray slingers to start moving uh, units around, which actually boost gas coin. And then two stray bombers to set rows on fire. That's more than enough. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go with a bit different... A bit of a different type of deck but yeah we'll see how that goes so with that done we can actually check out the mess tent as well because we have a few new characters there now because we can talk to everybody about the new uh, changes of course going on and we can talk to Rayla and Gascon for the very first time 
But let's check up with uh, Reynard first. Yes, Your Grace. So, uh, how far we've fallen? <sighs> how has it come to this? I, Queen Meave of Lyria and Rivia, must prowl about the underbrush like a common bandit. And you, General Reynard Odo, once proud commander of four elite regiments of footmen, now lead a gang of deserters, bandits, and scythe wielding peasants. I do so proudly, Your Grace. You must be joking, Reynard. Your Majesty, under your husband I served ten years, under you another eight, and never in that time did I fight for a more worthy cause. We seek not to grab land or stifle a peasant revolt. We fight for all the North, for our freedom, that of others, and you alone didn't give up. Didn't even consider bending the knee before Nilfgaard. Yes, all true. Yet look where it's brought me. Your struggle has but begun, Your Grace. And I will do all in my power to see you triumph in the end. So, uh, and why couldn't we see through Caldwell? We kind of did, but me herself didn't. I cannot forgive myself one thing, that I failed to see through Caldwell's schemes. He must have plotted treason for months, years even. Yet I suspected nothing. Don't be too hard on yourself, Your Grace. Easily said. Ugh, oh, if I'd only realized it in time. Nilfgaard would have found a different traitor, or sent an assassin north. It was unavoidable what happened. The Black Clads would have attacked in any case, and we'd have stood no chance to defeat the foe in open battle, repel him, drive him out. So, had you been there when the peers assembled, you also would have voted to bend the knee? No. My honor would never have allowed it. I'd have thrown myself into the fire, and probably died a fool for it. As matters stand, I still have a chance to thwart the invader, his intentions. It seems, in a twisted turn of fate, I should be grateful to Cordwell. Okay, that's a weird way of looking at it, but uh, thanks for your opinions, Reynard. And it's I still love this guy. The matters. I love this guy. He's a really loyal soldier. Um, let's go to his polar opposite then, uh, with whom he's actually playing cards. I can only assume he's playing Gwent with Gascon. So, Gascon, the soldier's life, does it suit you? <laughs> About the same as the bandit's life did. I beg your pardon? The tents are cold, the food's shite. On the plus side, plenty to drink, most days. A skirmish here, a scuffle there, Nilfgaardians one day, elves the next, and whoever we rout, we rob of what they've got. Requisition, you mean? Fully in accordance with the laws of war? Oh, please. Save your excuses for your father, confessor. Now he has kind of, he kind of has a point. Um, why do they call you the Duke of Dogs? Finally, we can get to uh, ask the more important questions. The Duke of Dogs? When's the name? Not certain I should tell you. It's uh, a personal story, somewhat. I insist. So, thing is, I'm a werewolf of sorts. Excuse me? Did I hear werewolf? Of sorts. You see, when the full moon glows in the night sky, I transform into a creature that's half man, half dash hund. <laughs> okay. And then all the other hounds of the night hearken to my command. Oh! Okay, he's a he's oh, an idiot. I asked. Yeah, indeed. Uh, with pleasure. So I always assumed that he was called the Duke of Dogs because they call the bandits the strays of Spala, so those are dogs, and the stray dogs. Which is why he's the leader, and he's called the Duke of Dogs. I can't stop wondering. How did your strays break into the tower in Lyria? They exploited its chief weakness. What weakness is that? I oversaw its construction myself. Walls five feet thick, bars and grates of the sturdiest iron. All tremendous, I'm sure. But how much do you pay the guards? What? I, I don't know. The garrison's commander is in charge of that. Let me tell you then. Not much, me. <laughs> Not enough. Not much at all. From atop a throne, it's hard to spot the little things. Example, a guard hard up for coin, or one with ambitions. But seeing that second nature to even the most ordinary bandit. I mean, look at how Meave is looking right now. I love the attention to detail. She really looks weary and tired. Take any castle door. To open it, 
To open all, one needs but a pouch of gold. Okay. Cool way of going around to that, just bribing everybody. It's time I attended to other matters. Farewell. Goodbye, Casco. Uh, let's have a little chat with Ake. Ake, the lovely, lovely man. Your Grace. Look at that mustache. How you're here. Behold what wickedness is afoot. Uh oh. I'm trying to behold Sir Ake, yet I cannot be sure what. Reynard and Gascon, my lady. Caught in the act of playing face cards. Oh no. Oh, that. Indeed they are. Good. Good? Good! Games of chance, good. Why, they are evil's very claws. Corrupting, tearing at the soul, seeping venom into the heart. Coming from a game with randomized card gags, but never mind. I wouldn't worry about Reynard's heart, Sir Ake. As for Gascon's, too late already, I fear. Besides, they're getting along, that's what matters. If cards do the trick, so be it. Um, okay, and that's apparently the end of that conversation. Tell me more about the good book. Does the good book contain an answer to every question? Each and every query. Without exception. What does it prescribe a mother betrayed by her son? Tender forgiveness or unflinching firmness? Hmm. A moment while I ponder. There's a verse in chapter two. A child who doth with waywardness defy his mother and father deserveth discipline most severe. Strike him thus heartily, unless thine heart stilleth thy hand. Okay. But one could interpret that any way one wishes. Yeah, indeed. To thine own self be judge and ruler, spoke the prophet Lebioda. For thou alone shalt answer for thine deeds before thee. I love his animations when he's going through the the good book. Um, not particularly helpful still. I'm going to be nice to him because I don't want him to run off again. There's a certain wisdom into those words. There's a certain wisdom to those words? Yes, your majesty. One need but gaze deeply into the verses and oneself. Doesn't doesn't hurt to rub his uh, shiny plate a bit. Uh, so thank you, Ake, for those uh, nice, nice and wisdomful words. Farewell, Ake. And then, last but not least, pretty—I think they call her Pretty Kitty in the in the books, uh, unless I'm thinking about somebody else. But I think that's Black Rayla. How fare you, Rayla? The quartermaster did he assign you a tent? He tried. Okay. Oh, and I refused it. Best to sleep beneath the stars. Little chance of a foe catching you off guard. Also true. Rain accepted, perhaps. I love her armor, by the way. I'm not way. made of sugar, ma'am. I'm not gonna melt. Okay. So, the special forces, how did you come to join them? One sees very few women in the ranks, let alone in the special forces. How did you come to join? On merit? Proved I'd be of use? Yes, well, naturally. But how exactly? I was 15 when I went to enlist. But the sergeant in charge of signing folk up told me to scurry on home. So I proposed a wager, arm wrestling. If I won, he'd let me join. If I lost, I'd pay him a hundred crowns. And that kind of coin? You had it? No, so I had to win. As we sat down at the table, across from each other, he laughed and rolled up his sleeve. When it was over, all around us were laughing at him. Then I just followed orders. Did so well enough to draw the king's attention. So she's a badass, by the way, if you hadn't noticed yet. So, yeah, strong women all around, but we must go. I must go. We'll speak later. So that was a nice bit of character. Well, not really introduction, but a nice, nice bit of character backstory. We still don't know what this guy does. He's just the, the, the Grey Rider, just statistics. But is, is there anything else to this guy? Because he's really, really creepy. Or maybe that's Geralt. That would be cool. Um, but I think that's about it. So let's move on. And have ourselves another card battle, because I feel like we haven't done anything in this entire episode. Well, we, we did get a lot of uh, nice backstory, so let's just take a look around. Ooh, golden chests! This looks like Rayla's camp. Congratulations, you've discovered a card that you can use in Gwent. Uh, I think I have that card already, Ache of the Nell. But uh, let's claim it anyway. Let's claim it anyway. Might be that I didn't have the animated version just yet, so let's move on. Where, where's this going? Um, isn't this the road we need to take? Ah, we must have come from the other direction then. We came from the south and now we just went the, the wrong way. Let's just check the map. 
Yeah, okay, so we entered the, the map on the south. Let's just take a look around. It looks like it's about as big as the previous bit. Just a bit more north to south than anything else. Uh, seems pretty straightforward first on, so let's just take a look around. All seems calm. The entire country up in flames. Eptar, he warned punishment awaited Edurn, that he would show the land no mercy. What in God's names did you do to him, Rayla? Nilfgaard offered us an alliance against the rest of the North, but Demaven declined in his clipped soldier's speech. They say Eptar, he flew into a rage and swore he'd reduce Edurn to rubble. Well, looks like he succeeded. That looks horrifying. Um, let's just continue uh, raiding the countryside. I feel like we're getting more and more stuff from all of this. From the little caches. So let's go north first because that seems like it's separated. And everything has turned dark if you hadn't noticed yet. There's a rat up there. Can't get up there but there's a little rat. A little rat. Ooh, knackers. Let's take a look. Battle. Not a living soul. A modest hamlet was located just to the north of Wayfarer's Beach. As Mee's army approached, it became clear, even from afar, that the village had not been spared the carnage of war. Its dwellings appeared smashed and burned, and a rancid, smoky stench lingered in the air. Yet, what of the village's fate? Alas, they were strewn on the earth at the center of the settlement, their bodies mutilated by the gnashing maws of carrion eaters. And the beasts had not yet strayed far from their gory bounty. Seems like it's a normal battle, a standard battle against monsters. I'm gonna have to be careful because my deck is not as filled as it used to be. But we have high morale so should be fine for now. Um, let's take a look. I'm just gonna take one drummer. Yeah, we're not gonna get much more, are we? Yeah, here we go. We're gonna do it with this. So every unit that spawns will be damaged. And otherwise, I don't really know. Consume the top unit in your graveyard and spawn a base copy of it. It can't do that right now. So we're fine for now. Uh, so let's start by just putting one of the drummers down. Army's wasted time for one like Here we go. So Neckers start with five. Every turn on turn start, summon a Necker on this row from your deck. That might be a problem. Because of course they're going to keep doing that. Does it need to be on a certain row? It does not. Uh, so let's just put the Lyrian Sightman down. Aye. Uh, and use the Regiment Drummer to get another Sightman. That is really good. That is actually really ah, good. Should have listened to me old lady. And I'm going to wait with Meave's ability. Because we will be able to do 4 damage on all those Neckers. If we can't do anything about it. So, here we go. And an Alpha Wolf for every wolf in your hand, boost self by one, then damage a random enemy by two. Repeat this ability whenever a wolf ally appears. Okay. Let's just use the Stray's Bomber to set the row of the Nexus on fire. So that means we should be able to... Yeah, we'll see what happens then. So there we go. Ooh, that actually stacks really nicely. Hmm. I think I'm gonna use Meave's ability now. Um, but first, do we have any other loyal abilities? I don't think we have. Could use Reynard. We must trust each other. To get another thing out. Okay, that's the other bomber. Which is fine, I guess. I can use this that could hurt. to set the back row on fire. And then use Meave's ability to damage all the knackers. Ha! By four. There we go. Boosting all our sightmen as well. And there we go. Those get filled, but the row is on fire, so maybe. No. Only the backfire actually triggered. This is going strongly, by the way. Uh, consume the top unit in your graveyard and spawn a copy of it. 
Interesting, interesting. So I'm gonna keep my Stray Slinger for later. And just use my first Forager on Raynard. Because he's the highest there, unit. Just take the whole finger. And upgrade to that. And there goes the first Necker. Choose a bronze ally on the battlefield or in hand and spawn three copies of it in your deck. Do they actually come... Oh, they, the Neckers actually come from the deck. Which is interesting. So if I just drain them, it should actually be fine. Okay, let's just keep going. Because I'm slowly starting to lose this. There's a few cards I at least want to use for now. One man's battlefield is another man's So there we go, 35. And there go the rest of the Neckers, but they get damaged. And another Necker Warrior. Probably adds a lot more Neckers to his deck. Ah damn, son. Let's use the Alchemist to set that one bomber. If anyone asks. You've not like seen that. Me. The 26. Gives us a lot of points for almost for free. Then end the turn and see what else happens. More Neckers. Oh, they're actually lower. And a lot of them start to die, of course, because of the fire. And he passes. Okay, that's annoying. But yeah, means that I should pass as well, probably. Because otherwise, they probably keep spawning Neckers. Should probably... Play a card from your deck. Okay. I think I'm going to keep it like this for now. And just pass immediately. So there we have... Yeah, he consumed one of the units. Which means that that's... Yeah, he's just pulling Knackers out. Which is fine by me. Because the more Knackers he pulls out, the less they're gonna trouble me. Ooh, there's Ake. Ooh! I did not know that. So I was wondering... So Ake's original ability had a deploy ability. So he damages an enemy by his own power, but he didn't have that if I checked him later on. But apparently he turns into Egg Holy Warrior if you have the Manticore trophy on the battlefield or if you're battling monsters and both of those things are actually going on. So that is cool, definitely keeping Egg in my deck now. The rest, I think I should stay away from healing my allies and just get another Forager, yeah, that's great. Okay, okay, okay. This is gonna be nice. This is gonna be nice. So let's start out with the war wagon. There we go. And get out that out there. The next card is probably gonna be Black Rayla. And she's gonna be able to give us another card. Because we're not gonna be able to take out Squirtail units. Because that's just not what we're fighting. So, and we can play a card from her deck that way as well. So let's just put her down. And end the turn. Because I'm going to wait for a few more Neckers to spawn. Because as long as that happens, we can boost the damage from our own units. There we go. One of our light infantry dudes go down. I think I'm just going to see what Black Rayla... Oh, I can actually choose. So I did 6 damage with 9 power, which gives us 15. And Gascoins as well. Or... The Sightmen are going to go up to 18, which is not amazing. So yeah, the Straight Slinger. Let's do that. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Uh, that, that, and one of the Neckers. So I don't destroy any Neckers for now. And that boosts gas going up immensely. And then we can put down another card. And I think I'm just going to keep going with the Straight Slingers. No, you know what, Just let's just go on with the Slingers and damage the rest of those higher level units. So deploy. That one, that one, and the 4 one. There we go. And end the turn. So more neck is coming in. And they're all getting damaged. I'm gonna deplete the deck, probably. Aside from those, of course, because they're going to keep going. Then, first off, I think we should now use 
uh, Meave's ability. And damage all those with 5 health, because that's going to give us the most damage out of this. There we go. Uh, no loyal abilities, of course, to speak of. Um, which means I should probably just get another Stray Slinger out there to get our final movements are, going on. There, and... That one. And, and the... Oh, they didn't move because, yeah, there's no space for them to move. Okay. Some more knackers being added. I think just to be able to... Because I can't move anything anymore. So just use Gascon next. Nothing personal, I assure and, you. And the turn. So as long as their field is blocked, they can't really do much. Because now they need to start tossing units away. Because that's my tactic for now. And then we're going to destroy a whole lot of Neckers now. Because two damage on everything means that every single Necker and the Wolves are going to die. So... You know what? I'm going to leave that as my last card. So let's use Egg and damage a unit by his power, which is 24. So we're going to take out the Necker Warrior and move that closer. Then end the turn. And there we go. Hasn't been able to use the, the Rot Fiend in its hand. And now we're just going to use the Lyrian Horn to wipe the field clean. Bada boom! And we get a nice trophy for that. Party's over. And then just gonna... Just just for fun. Four damage on the Naked Warrior. And, and this with a 145 versus 1. There we go. Cleared out the Neckers and the Ghouls. That's actually cool. I love the new deck, which is a bit more aggressive than what we're used to. Uh, Father, the Black Lads are advancing from the south. Fortifications along the border in Valkart and Lutin have already fallen, and the Devils are setting alight all else in their path. Take what you and Mum have of worth and go at once to Rosberg, to an uncle. You'll be safest there. I know what you're thinking. Sixty years on your brow, seven wars you've survived, and this one's no different. But it is, Papa. You must trust me. I beg you, your Keller. And, yeah, they sadly died. But there's a cart full of... Yeah, nothing apparently. That was not actually that much. Um, and we didn't get too many resources from that, so I'm not going to check if we can upgrade anything else. But there I see more recruits later on. So let's just move a bit further and see what else... Oh, you know what? With that character backstory, I'm, I think we're going to take a little break. So thank you guys so much for watching. And next up, we're going to continue deeper into Ether. So uh, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.